Hi everyone, welcome back to Plan Happens. I hope the first month of 2023 has been great for you. Uh, I've been doing great and uh, I think things are getting better and getting settled. So I'm looking forward that this year is gonna be a great year for me. And uh, without going on a tangent, I think we'll just jump right into this video. So today we're gonna talk about trailing plants. I've chosen seven trailing plants to show. Um, these are not the only seven trailing plants I have. I have have um, some others, but these are the seven that are growing really, um, really great and really easy. And they've all been growing in just the room condition, uh, except for one. One is in a tent, but that's not a hu high humidity tent. So I think it will grow just fine in uh, room condition as well and you'll see when I show it but uh, I decided to talk about trailing plants because I think a lot of people get into this hobby uh, hoping to decorate their house you know green it, green your room up a little bit and that's how actually I got into the hobby too and trailing plants are very very attractive because because how pretty they look, I think. You know, they will look great on a shelf, they will look great hanging on the windowsill, and they are kind of ready, readily available in garden centers or big box stores. So I thought I will share some of my favorite trailing plants, and these will be what I recommend if you are a beginner. And even if you're not a beginner, you know, if you just want an easy plant that is pretty and you don't have to care too much about, um, these will be my recommendations. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. So let's just jump right into it. So the first plant I have here is Pothos. Um, it's a glacier slash enjoy. So I'm not quite sure what to call this one because when I originally bought this, it was um, I did get this from my friend Charmaine, and it was supposed to be glacier. But I, I think a lot of us know that glaciers are kind of like it's hard to identify sometimes, and a lot of uh, pothos around in that group like gla glacier and joy and pro and pro and pro and jade, pros and jade. But like they are very similar, so I do think um, sometimes they're hard to ID. But this one definitely don't look exactly like Enjoy, but it also don't look exactly like Glacier. And I do find Enjoy leaves to stay relatively small, which this is. And I think great Glacier leaves can get bigger, but these are staying kind of small. So that's why that's one of the reason why it's kind of. I'm not sure, but I'll show you closer. There are many leaves on here that are very like enjoy like. I don't know what else to show, but I'll just kind of, yeah. So it is a very pretty pothos. And um, pothos in general are very easy to grow in any condition. They don't need any high humidity. They don't need high light. And of course, they can enjoy those things. They might grow faster, bigger leaves, or you know, better in that condition. But as far as growing one and not killing one, just putting it in a medium light and just um, watering when the soil is dry has been completely fine with all the pothos I have. I have this one, I have another one I can show you, and I have several others. Now, Manjula is probably my favorite pothos, but that one I'm not growing as a trailing plant, so I'm not bringing it, bringing it in this video. So yeah, this plant, I think it started out as two small cuttings. They were one or two nodes when I got it, and it's been, I want to say, I got it in 2020, so it's like three years, probably not three years yet because um, I think I got it like late 2020, so two and a half years. So it hasn't grown like too big as you can see, but it's been growing consistently and I have taken cuttings from this plant obviously, so 
I am very happy with the size it is now. I am putting it on a shelf near my kitchen. So my kitchen has, um, it's a, what is it? West facing window. And so it gets some light. It's not the best light, but it's enough for this to continue to grow. And it doesn't die back. It doesn't, you know, uh, have any problem being in there. So I wanted to show some of the leaves that look more gray glacier. I don't know if you can see like this one has definitely has like three shades of more than three shades of green in there even some like minty bits coming in and there are also like where did it go it's, it's hard to find the leaves once you lose them there are also like leaves like this that's super cute it doesn't look like glacier it doesn't look like enjoy but really cute, almost like mini manjula, I guess. And then there's also like um, this leaf that has more of that like mottled marbling going on. It's just so hard to find because there's so many leaves, but like this one is almost all green, but it also has like different shades of green. So I'm not sure where you will be able to find like actual glacier. Um, I do see them shared on Facebook from time to time, but enjoys are definitely very available in big box stores. I see them all the time at Home Depot or Lowe's. So if you like this kind of look, I think it will be great to grab one and just put it anywhere that is um, near a window. So as long as it's getting some light from the window, I think it will grow fine. So again, this is the Pothos Glacier slash Enjoy. Very pretty. Next plant I have is this um, Cebu Blue Pothos or Pothos Cebu Blue. So Cebu is a city from Philippines, I believe. I have to look that up to double check. I don't want to be wrong. Uh, if I am wrong, I'll put it somewhere here, but I do believe it's in Philippines and I assume this was discovered in that city. And as you can see, this plant has like bluish green leaves. That's why the name Cebu Blue, especially when the light shine on it, it has that blue tint. I think if you compare it to Enjoy, you can really see the more bluish tint on this plant and it has these elongated leaf shape can you see i find these plants to be really hard to show because it's just like a whole, whole big chunk of leaves and then they blend into each other so it's very hard to showcase each leaves but as i was saying they have long longer leaves than most common pothos and i think this plant has become pretty common now because it, i mean as most pothos grow really fast so once you have it you can propagate it quite often so that's what happened at least in vancouver there were several stores started carrying this plant last year and then i think a lot of people grabbed it really quickly including myself and we share it with the community so now it's very very common but i know in 2020 or early 2021 this was quite rare to find and yeah so mine is from i bought it from lowe's and it was from costa farms so i was very lucky to be able to find a big basket to begin with so i don't take <laughs> I don't take uh, credit for growing this like a large basket because I bought it as a pretty full plant. So I've been growing this plant in a uh, Wally Grow Planter. It looks like this and it has holes uh, throughout the front and uh, you kind of water it from the back and this is something you can put it on the wall like this and it's like supposed to be decorative but I don't use it as a wall hanging plant. I mean wall hanging planter. I've been just putting this on a shelf and then it's kind of a narrow shelf so the top shelf goes right above the plant that's why it's kind of sparse at the bottom uh, sorry not the bottom at the top 
because at the top doesn't get any light and uh, even though it does continue like constantly put out new leaves once it gets longer it does do you know these things because it's, it's probably not getting enough light to be honest it's near the north facing window but so far I haven't had problem with this dying back it's just once it gets longer it does these um, leafless vines so I chop it off and then it will activate growth point somewhere in between to make it a fuller plant yeah so again it's a very easy plant all the pothos are pretty easy to take care of. so if you are just getting into growing plants definitely that's something you will you know I will recommend starting with and these are the two that I thought maybe you don't always see um, you don't see them as often as like golden pothos or marble cream but they are becoming more available so I think the color of this and the shape of this is a little bit more interesting than um, more common pothos so yeah so again this is Cebu blue pothos really big really pretty the next uh, plant I want to show is the skindapsis what is a skindapsis it's not Algerius oh skindapsis pictus exotica yes <laughs> I think that's the name I'll put the name after I look it up um, uh, down somewhere down here for sure but I think that's what it is so I um, I think skindapsis had a really like a long way to come um, when I got into collecting plants in 2019 they were not that available I think some skindapsis was were in big box stores but not very many usually you will only see like the, the Algerias or yeah, but anyways it was not very available and it's like silvery and exotic looking so you know it was very sought after and then there's so many different kinds of the silver pattern to this specific um the skindapsis pictus um species and like everyone was trying everyone and their aunts are trying to collect all the different kinds of skindapsis in 2020 myself included and I do really love how they look they're very very pretty I think the green on the leaf, leaves are like kind of like the Cebu blue it's a little bit bluish and with the silver through it and you know the silver when you it's really hard to see this on this plant but when the light shine on it the silver is actually sparkly and it's just really really pretty plant and like it's just having this on your shelf or on your window is just very 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 attractive looking so yeah but now I think most of the pictus variegate uh, sorry not variegation varieties are pretty common now I, I know there are some skin depths that's still very expensive especially like the variegated ones but I have gotten rid of all of my skin depths except for this one and I have another silver hero that is not doing great it's basically one like two meter long vine with very sparse leaves because I'm not giving it the care it needs it's just uh, on the north on the north window windowsill and I'm just watering it not doing much but this uh, contrary to my neglect like this one is just doing so great I um, I think Charmaine or Alice helped me pick this picking a yellowing leaf, leaf it happens it's fine don't worry um, yeah I think when they went to was it Devon somewhere they picked it up for me because I really wanted a big basket of skin depths because all the ones I had were like small and you know like had really small leaves and the exotica I think usually has the biggest leaves so I just really wanted a big basket and this is actually still in the original soil and it's just doing fine and this one is also near the north facing window so it doesn't grow very fast but it doesn't you know it doesn't drop leaves I guess and it does 
continue to put out new leaves except you know the leaves grown uh, near the north facing window are not as silver I think the, all the leaves that's grown in that location are not like super silvery I need to hide my face to show the leaves there but some of the original leaves are very silver like this one but I don't mind I don't mind the mix of the silver and dark green because I do really love the dark green green dark green dark green color on these leaves so yeah again um it's an easy to grow plant I feel like it's a hit and miss. I actually had another Exotica before this, which was just one vine. I was trying to grow big, but like it just it wasn't going nowhere. It kept give um, kept putting out the what's it called a runner and without leaves. So I don't know. Maybe a mature one like this is just easier to grow because I like I said I bought this as a ba like for basket. So maybe it's just easier to take care with all these leaves producing like nutrients for itself to survive but yeah I find skin depths to be harder when it's a small cutting and I that was the case with all the other skin depths I had silvery Anne or Argerius or even the trubiaise skin depths trubiaise they are very very slow growing so yeah that's why like it was not giving me any joy to grow them except for this one so I guess this is what that's why this is still staying with me and um, oh yes, and if you are looking for a skin depths like this, um, sometimes they are sold as um, satin portals because I assume because of the silver and the, the even the green part have like the satin texture to it. So yeah, um, that could be something you will search for if you are looking for skin depths like this. So again, this is a great looking. Uh, trailing plant to have in your home and if you can find like a full basket I think it's quite easy to take care all I do is water it probably every once a week and I don't because I I've been growing these plants for really long so I kind of know how much water it needs but uh, what I would suggest is make sure the soil is like at least halfway dry I don't like the the, the soil to stay too wet for this one so yeah and uh, this one is in pretty uh, it's medium it's not our it's not like arrow mix but it's just soil and perlite for the most part yeah so I will water it once a week not like fully saturate the soil if you know what I mean I think I will water it so all the top soil is wet and then over time it kind of does get absorbed into the bottom and then top gets dry again and then I kind of water it again so that's how I've been taking care of this and it's been doing great the next plant I have here is the pseudo ripsalis ramlosa um, it's also known as red ripsalis sometimes it will be just called ripsalis ramlosa but I think it was recategorized recategorized as pseudo ripsalis I'm not sure I'm not a botanist as I mentioned a million times so I, I'm not sure what happened to this plant that that triggered the recategorization but um, yeah so it used to be considered as a ripsalis when I bought this it was just like about to change the name I think uh, I bought this did I buy this or trade it yeah I bought this from um, Alice from um, Mrs. Koizumi plant and uh, she gave me one long cutting which I cut into two pieces to propagate and then it is growing kind of um, bark heavy pawn and it's been doing great and I've cut this several times to share as well and unfortunately it's not sun stressing for me I have put I put this in a tent very very close to the light now hoping it was sun stress because that light I'm using does sun stress my Hoyas so I thought it was sun stress this as well but so far 
only it's only giving me a little bit of red in the new on, on the new leaves this is one of the newer leaf uh, you can see the tip is a little pink and this is another new leaf that's coming with a little bit of red tint but yeah so far i am unsuccessful to make this red but still i think this is like really cute trailing plant it grows these little like almost like a pro balls on it i think they're supposed to be flowers i'm not sure is it seed or is it flowers so when you look up photos online maybe i'll put it here um it could grow like so many of these little balls and it's super cute especially when it's red oh you can see the new one new new little balls ah how am i gonna show this okay they are forming on here the new ones are forming here they it looks like they start out green and then eventually turn white and yeah when it has so many of those little balls it's just really cute and i'm hoping maybe this summer i can maybe i can put it outside to sound stressed i'm a little bit scared because i do love this plant a lot i'm scared to kill it i just think these little like, i guess it's a little bit similar to like christmas or thanksgiving cactus but i just find the growth pattern of this so much cuter and i bought this when i was kind of into ripsalis I, I wanted all the ripsalis i can buy but i'm so glad that i did buy this uh it grows relatively fast um as i mentioned i've cut this several times already and i did get it when it was like maybe maybe just just this this part like the end it was like that size so yeah i think this is uh, something different you know a lot of when people think about trailing plants they do think about pothos uh, trailing philodendrons maybe hoyas but ripsalis are underrated and so easy to grow and they, uh, their requirements are not like they don't require a lot of light to grow even though they are what are they jungle cactus is that what they're called yeah i think jungle cactus so you will think maybe they need a lot of lights but they really don't i mean yes all all plants can benefit from more lights but you know um, well aside from being burned but like giving them gradually higher lights usually will promote more growth but when we when we live in a dark house you just have to work with what you have and this this plant has been great um, when I just had it in the regular shelf not inside a tent with um, just uh, same amount of light as pothos it was growing fine too so yeah um, I'm gonna show it. it's kind yeah like I said I think it reminds me of those um, Thanksgiving or Christmas cactus a little bit but I like the shape of this a lot more and to be honest i don't like the bloom on those cactus so i do but i much rather have those little pearls grow beside it and then it has like small flower at the tip of those pearls and uh, how i propagate this is i've heard that you can leaf propagate this i've never tried that but as you can see on this here i it kind of has a stem so I cut the stem and then I just stick it in perlite and then it just roots for me. Uh, maybe next time I'll try propagating through leaves, but yeah. So this is the pseudo, pseudo ripsalis ramulosa. Really cute. Really cute. Next plant I have here is um, Deschidia or Deschidia? I think it's Deschidia. Deschidia what is it? Hirsuta, yeah. Um, the Shidia Hirsuta. This is another plant I think doesn't get talked about enough. It is one of, like, if I have to throw out all my plants and have to keep maybe 10 plants, this actually might be one of them, weirdly. It's not a very expensive plant, but I also don't see this for sale very often. Um, I think I bought this because I really liked how small the leaves are. It reminds me of serpents, like Hoya serpents, but 
the sh leaf shapes are a little bit different. Like the leaves are a little bit bigger than serpents, but it's definitely smaller than Hoya Mathilde. So this plant has small leaves that are a little bit fuzzy and it grows these pink flowers. I don't know if I can show you. I will try my best without falling. I think you can see the flower bud. It's not focusing, let's see. Too close? Here. Yeah, you can see the pink flower buds. They are super, super cute. They do flower pretty often for me. And when it opens, it doesn't open like Hoya flowers. I'm gonna show you the flower. I think I have one that's open and it's just super cute. Can you see? Okay. I'm gonna try my best to show you the flower. My camera is going crazy. I don't know if this is gonna... If not, I will insert a photo, but yeah, so it doesn't fully open like Hoya flowers, but it's just super, super cute. And once it flowers at nighttime, it, it will have like um, nectar come out from the flower. And uh, I, I could probably insert some photos of that too. And yeah, again, this has been really easy to grow for me. I purchased this in 2021 and it was probably just like maybe one strand like this size, but but it was probably like two stems that's, that's like this, this long from like about maybe four inches long, two strands. And it's been growing so well. And I'm not really sure what am I, what I'm doing that's right to, you know, grow, grow this so long. But what I can't ever find where I found that information before, but I remember seeing someone saying deschidias, um, deschidias really um, like shallow watering, which means like I don't soak the soil completely when I water the plant. So I just go, I use some um, sprayer to wet the topsoil, maybe like two centimeters of the, like maybe like less than an inch of the topsoil and that's that's all I do and I only water this like once a week so it really doesn't require too much light this plant and this is growing on my plant shelf uh, the grow light is probably two two or three feet away and yeah it's doing great I would have thought this might need more light but so far it's been doing fine with that, the, you know, being two or three feet away from the light. Um, also, this Shilia Hirsuta has several different varieties. This one is the one with like dark pink or maybe like light plum color flower, but there are many different kinds. And there are a type of uh, this Shilia that can sun stress to very, very deep purple. So I do hope one day I could get those, but though, uh, some of them are very limited to like um, New Zealand, sometimes Australia. And I think I've mentioned this before in other video, uh, New Zealand and Australia have very strict law to protect their habitat. So ex export import is a little bit difficult. So, but I'm sure it's slowly making its way to North America. So one day I will try to get different kinds of this plant. But so far I've been like super happy with this and it's just, you know, the strings, this, this is not, con I don't think this one has a name that is string of blah, 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 like string of hearts or string of pearls, but I feel like it should have a name like that. I don't know what it will be. String of buttons. I think that exists. I don't know. I don't know why it could be a string of, but it's definitely have the same vibe. It just have the very long stems is it stem yeah stems vines and then it just have all the small leaves hanging it's just super cute super dainty like very whimsical so yeah i would think a lot of people will like this kind of plant 
on their shelf or on their windowsill. Very cute, very easy plant. I can't believe I forgot to mention this earlier, but I have not included any Hoyas in this video because I talk about Hoyas a lot on this channel. So I thought, you know, um, I will do like week, not weekly, monthly, <laughs> weekly favorite, can you imagine? Monthly favorite Hoyas, maybe like every other month. And from time to time, I'm, I will probably talk about like easy Hoyas or difficult Hoyas. So I thought I don't need to include Hoyas in this video. Next up is Heartleaf Philodendron, a variegated one. Um, let me think, it's Philodendron Hederacium variegated, if I'm saying that right. I'll put it down here as usual. So yeah, commonly known as Heartleaf Philodendron, they're like uh, heart-shaped green leaves that's trailing and I think it's very popular and they have like a lime green version that is called is it philodendron lemon lime neon i always get confused which which is neon and which is lemon lime but they have different varieties and this one is the variegated one i'll get closer so you can see the leaves i hope yes yeah, so this one has kind of similar variegation to maybe pothos um, marble queen but I do prefer the philodendron. I, I love my marble queen for how easy it's, it is to grow and how pretty it is. But I think I like the growth pattern of uh, philodendron more. It, they, once they, like if you put it in one location, they will all face the light. This one is actually kind of getting light from top down. So it is not all facing one direction, but if it's like, if it's on a shelf like this and then light is coming from this way then all the leaves will uh, leaves will face front and i think that looks really pretty but uh, right now i'm just giving it a top down light so it's not facing all to the front but i love the variegation on these with the leaf shapes like the heart leaf shape and um, i can show you some of the new leaves that's coming in they come in very light like this and sometimes they even have a little bit of like um, red-ish, brownish tint to it. Maybe you can see better over here on a different growth point. And I found a strange thing about this plant is that when I chop it, the first few leaves that it grows always are misshapen for example if i can find one like this one is super deformed those are the leaves that grew after i chop but after maybe like two or three leaves like these this is also kind of weird shape if you can see but after a few leaves it will start to grow like a normal looking shape like these it's so hard to focus today there so yeah don't worry if it starts to grow weird like deformed leaves just let it grow out and then eventually it will grow like the nice hard leaf shape again and also um i don't know if you've noticed but these new leaves are very very light with variegation very very like prominent but as it matures, it starts to kind of become more muted and eventually with really old leaves, they turn almost all green. It's very hard to see, but there is still variegation, but from afar, it will just kind of look like green leaves. So it, the variegation does fade, but I think it's kind of nice to Oh, what am I doing shifting around? But anyways, I think it is nice to have the variety with a little bit of red coming in and more dark green at the top and all the variegated leaves in between. So yeah, this one has been easy to grow. Once it's rooted and I put it in pond, it's just non-stop growing. It's putting constantly putting out new leaves. I haven't found any difficulties um, 
like the growth being stunt or anything but um, even when I chop it it puts out new leaf very very quickly but what I found is it's kind of hard to root the cutting for me the only way I could root this plant is in water. I've tried to put it in pond. I've tried to put it in perlite. I haven't tried soil, but they just don't root, even though there are many, like multiple, hmm? multiple aerial roots are in contact with the substrate. They just never root it. And then like all the leaves slowly wilted away. Um, at least good thing is that it never like just died right away but it just slowly wilted and then I was like okay this is not working so I cut off all the wilted leaves and then I put it in water and then it rooted so I don't know what the deal is with that because you know these kind of philodendrons are usually very easy to root so that's something to consider but I know like other people has been able to root this super easily so I don't know maybe I'm just doing something wrong but again can you see how pretty this plant is um it's just I don't know much what else I can say other than it's just really pretty and I think it's still relatively rare to find this it's not something you will find in garden center unless you're lucky to find like a sports variegation but if you want to find one, I think the place to try is Facebook groups. That's, that's your best bet to finding this plant. But I do think it's getting quite common to be able to find one of these in Facebook group compared to like a few years ago. So you'll have good, good luck finding this. I mean, that sounded like the opposite of what I wanted to say. Um, I think you have good chance finding this plant if you're on a Facebook group and uh, it's also not that expensive especially in vancouver now last but not least is my philodendron micans i think this pants needs no introduction uh, i think this is a lot of people's favorite uh, trailing plants because how dark the leaves are and how velvety they look and with the you know a little bit of red the abaxial has a lot of red so it just it looks so chic I think as a trailing plant I think this is the most classy chic looking plant so it's, if you have like dark themed interiors this will probably look the best and I mean obviously even if you have dark themed interior you can have like green to kind of like liven it up but if you just want overall theme to be dark then this will be definitely a good one to have I got this plant from my friend Alice, uh, I think in 2020 around Christmas time and she had like so many Mikan's prop going at the time and she just like she was just like giving it away to her friends. I think at the time Mikan's were still like not super cheap but uh, yeah she had like a ton of propagations so I say I'll ha love to have some because I had a micans before that, but I kind of gave it away in um, in a Facebook group. But that's besides the point. So I was happy to acquire it, and I grew it a little bit bigger, and then I put it in the pond, and then it exploded. So now it's just like this huge bush. I'm just I don't know if you are able to see. I've cut this plant so many times and I usually just give it away in the Facebook group because um, my cans are kind of readily available in Vancouver so you know there's really no point selling and because this plant grows so fast um, I'm really not worried about um, cutting it back. Uh, similar to Cebu Blue, once it gets like longer it starts to be a little bit more sparse so I chop it and then it activates more growth from in the middle or from the top so this one is in growing in the same location as my heart leaf philodendron it's the one that I just showed these are growing in the same location and they're all getting like kind of top down light as well as um, it's actually this one is getting a little bit, little bit of light from the side as well because I have a mother light that is kind of pointed near it yeah you can see the size difference 
this one is so much bigger but this one is also like uh, more much I, I've had it for much longer too so yeah I don't know what else to say other than like why don't you already have this plant <laughs> it's just so delicious looking no um, I think this reminds me of I don't know like the winter cold winter day and you want like a hot chocolate I don't know why that comes to my mind when I look at this plant but I think it's the darkness with a little bit of the bronzy reddish color it really reminds me of that and yeah so if you want something a little bit less green but still grows really nice this will be 100% your plant and what I found is um, if you give it a lot of light as you can see at the top there is a lot of redness so when it gets high light it will turn more red but when it gets like medium to low light it grows these really really pretty dark leaves and that's what I want so I've been growing it a little bit pulled back from the light and yeah it's just been the best plan anyways so that is philodendron micans i know everybody already know about this plant so i don't have too much to say but other than it's just so good i think if you find one cheap not even like facebook group i think nowadays you can find them in nurseries definitely pick one up fred is here he looks so big he's not that big you, you look like you're bigger than me what's happening you're so noisy i've tried to film with fred several times but i don't know the camera just goes crazy when there's a dog in the frame so you gonna go you go good boy anyways um, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, that was seven uh, trailing plants that I really recommend and uh, they are very pretty and they're easy going and they're not finicky and then they're just they grow really e easy I think I already said that but anyways so yeah I hope you found something interesting from this video and uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up that helps the visibility of this channel a lot and please subscribe to my channel if you like to see more videos from me and also hit the notification button if you want to be notified when I post a new video and I hope you enjoy this video and I hope I see you soon bye now